Today, we're going to talk about Biden's first year in office and his successes and failures. I'm Brian Tyler Cohen, and you're listening to No Lie. So this is the last episode of my video podcast for 2021. I wanted to touch on some of the good and the bad from this year and the implications as we head into a midterm year. I'll start with the bad so that we can end on a high note. So this past week, especially, was a rough one for Democrats. Joe Manchin showed up on Fox News of all places and said this. Well, Brett, you know, this is a mammoth piece of legislation, and I had my reservations from the beginning when I heard about it five and a half months ago, and I've been working diligently every day and every minute of every day. I've been working on this, meeting with whether it be the president, President Biden, whether it be Majority Leader Schumer and his staff, whether it would be with Nancy Pelosi, uh, all of my colleagues, I mean, from all different spectrums of, of the political spectrum, if you will, from the right to the left, I've done everything humanly possible. And you know my concerns I had, and I still have these concerns, and where I'm at right now, the inflation that I was concerned about, it's not transitory, it's real, it's harming every West Virginian. It's making it almost difficult for them to continue to go to their jobs, the cost of gasoline, the cost of groceries, the cost of utility bills, all of these things are hitting in every aspect of their life. And, and, you, and you start looking, and then, then you have the uh, debt that we're carrying at $29 trillion. You have also the geopolitical unrest that we have. You have the COVID, the COVID uh, variant, uh, and that is re- wreaking havoc again. People are concerned. I've been with my family. I know everyone's concerned. So when you have these things coming at you the way they are right now, uh, I've always said this, Brett, if I can't go home and explain it to the people of West Virginia, I can't vote for it. And I cannot vote to continue with this piece of legislation. I just can't. I've tried everything humanly possible. I can't get there. You're done. This is, this is a no. This is a no on this legislation. I have tried everything I know to do. And I'm not going to lie, this isn't great for Democrats for a few reasons. First, Democrats hinged everything on Build Back Better passing. There wasn't even more than five minutes of fanfare when the infrastructure bill passed because the fate of that bill was tied to the fate of this one. So when that passed, you know, that came and went like a fart in a hurricane because it was just understood that it was really just a breakaway element from the real bill, which was Build Back Better. Meaning that Build Back Better failing to pass really does make it seem like the entire agenda got sunk. Second, the implications for midterms aren't great. Democrats are not going to sail to victory in 2022 on the American Rescue Plan and a Rhodes Bill passing after spending the last six months talking about lower prescription drug prices and childcare and cutting insulin costs and universal pre-K and climate change funding. Because we spent so much time on those things, you're not just going to be able to pretend that all of a sudden they don't matter. That doesn't change the impact of those other pieces of legislation. They're still massively important, but Build Back Better is clearly the centerpiece of the Democratic agenda. And finally, this makes Biden look weak. And look, I understand that it's difficult to get 100% of your party on board with a margin of zero. I get that Joe Manchin is a conservative Democrat. I get that he's more beholden to his campaign donors and his own coal company. And so he'd rather pad his bottom line than help the people out of his own state. I get all of that and how that can make life a living hell for Joe Biden and how it is making life a living hell for Joe Biden. Trust me. But if this is your entire agenda, as it is for Biden, then you have no choice get it done. The simple fact is that most Americans don't care about the process. They don't know about the process. They don't have a clue who voted for what. They don't care how it gets passed. They just know whether it gets passed. And so knowing that, Biden's not going to get the benefit of the doubt. They're just going to see that he didn't succeed. So if the fate of your entire agenda rests on passing something, then you need to make sure that it passes. Now, granted, there's already talk of Build Back Better getting resurrected in 2022, because of all this pushback, right? Like, it's clear the trouble Democrats would be in without this bill passing. And so I'd venture to guess that a big part of the future of the Democratic Party rests on what happens with this bill, with Biden's agenda getting passed. And I think that the good news is that Democrats finally recognize that. So this is hopefully the kick in the ass that they need to ensure that some iteration of this bill passes so that how we feel now isn't how we feel heading into November of 2022. Now, with all of that said, It's not like Democrats didn't accomplish a ton this year, too. Like, I know that we tend to focus on what we didn't get because we want to keep the progress going, and we have this rare sliver of unified control of government, and that's normal, but we'd be crazy to ignore what we did get. We got a $1.9 trillion COVID relief package that ensured every single American has access to a free, life-saving vaccine. That alone, during a pandemic, is remarkable. 
And we've got 72% of Americans vaccinated. We got a $1 trillion infrastructure bill. And while we likely won't see the results of that immediately, that's gonna impact every community in America. Whether your roads are fixed, whether you have new pipes for clean drinking water, whether you now have access to broadband internet, We've got 40 Biden-nominated judges confirmed, the most since Reagan, the stock market's at record highs, unemployment's at 4.2%, jobless claims the lowest since 1969, child poverty's been cut in half. All of that is massive, especially given the fact that we're still in the middle of the worst pandemic in history. And aside from the tangible accomplishments, there's also what we were able to avoid by virtue of having a Democrat in office, by virtue of everyone having come out to vote. There was no pretending that COVID wasn't real, no cutting pandemic preparedness programs, no denying the impacts of climate change, no weakening of emission standards, no attacking journalists, uh, no tear gassing American citizens, no coddling neo-Nazis, no attacks on trans Americans, no revealing classified information to Russian ambassadors, no tax cuts for billionaires, no destroying our reputation abroad, no government shutdowns, no separating migrant kids from their parents, no pardons for criminals, no trying to get the Georgia Secretary of State to to rig the results of the election, no fomenting violent insurrections on the U.S. Capitol. So if you find yourself less than enthused about Biden's first year in office, just remember that by virtue of Biden being in office, we staved off some of what would have undoubtedly been more devastating behavior from the right. When you have a party that is as dangerous as the GOP, there is a lot of benefit in them simply not holding power. And that is just as, if not more important than the forward progress Democrats were able to make. So look, it's easy to look back and be disappointed that we didn't get Build Back Better passed, that we still haven't passed voting rights, that Roe is likely to get gutted. Trust me, I get it. I won't pretend that I'm not disappointed too. No, no point in sugarcoating it. But to quote, of all people, Joe Biden, don't compare me to the almighty, compare me to the alternative. We've got two choices, realistically two choices. You can choose the Democrats who, yes, are a pain in the ass and often can't figure out how to get out of their own way, but who are largely trying to expand healthcare and protect women's reproductive health and fight climate change, or you can choose the Republicans, who are focused on cutting taxes for millionaires and billionaires and stripping women of their bodily autonomy and pretending climate change isn't real. Those are the choices. And I'm not suggesting blind deference to the Democratic Party. That doesn't mean we shouldn't always, always, always push Democrats to be better. We should. But we should also try and take a holistic view of this and recognize that while Democrats aren't perfect, they are a hell of a lot better than the alternative. Now to everyone watching this video podcast series and my regular daily YouTube videos, first off, thank you for giving me a little bit of time each week this past year. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I hope that you all take some time to relax over the holiday, remember that it's okay to do nothing, and come back well rested in 2022. Okay, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays, and I'll be back in January. Thank you.